Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of Meniere's disease. So we're going to briefly talk about what Meniere's disease is, and then we're going to get into the signs and symptoms and then why they occur. So Meniere's disease is also known as idiopathic endolymphatic hydrops. It is an inner ear disorder involving recurrent and prolonged episodes or attacks of vertigo with associated symptoms. So it affects inner ear structures like the semicircular canals and the cochlea. And Meniere's disease itself has an unknown etiology. Now, there are some conditions that can cause these symptoms to occur, but if the underlying cause is known, we would refer to that as Meniere's syndrome. So Meniere's disease, by definition, has an unknown etiology. Although the etiology is unknown, the pathophysiology behind Meniere's disease and Meniere's syndrome involves accumulation of endolymphatic fluid within inner ear structures like the cochlea. Now, if an individual does happen to have Meniere's disease, they're more likely to get this condition in the fourth to sixth decade of life, and it affects approximately 3.5 to 500 people per 100,000. There are a variety of triggers for these episodes or these attacks of vertigo. Some of these triggers include high salt intake, chocolate, alcohol, smoking, stress, and the menstrual cycle. So changes in the menstrual cycle can also lead to these attacks as well. If you want more information on triggers of this condition, please check out my full lesson on this topic. But the topic of this lesson is the signs and symptoms of Meniere's disease. And there are a variety of signs and symptoms that can occur. So we're going to talk about those signs and symptoms in the next upcoming slides. So it's important to recognize that the signs and symptoms are progressive. Oftentimes when a patient has the onset of this condition, they begin to have some of these symptoms, those attacks of vertigo along with associated symptoms. And as the condition continues, the longer they have this condition, the worse and worse the symptoms become. So the signs and symptoms are progressive. And it's also important to note that a lot of signs and symptoms are unilateral. So they affect one side. So they'll affect one ear most often. But in some cases, it can be bilateral, so it can affect both ears. So it's important to make note of that as well. So as you we mentioned before, this is an inner ear disorder involving recurrent spontaneous episodes of vertigo. So what is vertigo? Vertigo is a sensation of spinning or the room spinning when the person is motionless. So even if the person is sitting or standing in one place, it feels that the room is spinning around them. It can often feel like a whirling sensation. And this is often going to be the first symptom to occur during an attack. This is going to be the hallmark symptom of Meniere's disease or Meniere's syndrome. And it's going to be spontaneous and recurrent, as we mentioned earlier on in this lesson. And it's important to make note of the fact that this episode of vertigo lasts for 20 minutes to upwards of 12 hours. So it oftentimes occurs for a long period of time. So it can be very, very debilitating for patients. Another very important symptom of Meniere's disease is tinnitus or tinnitus. Tinnitus or tinnitus is a ringing in the ears. So tinnitus can occur in many different conditions, and oftentimes it's going to be described as a white noise or a buzzing or machine-like sound, but it can be different depending on the condition. In Meniere's disease, it can sound like a whistling sound, but it can also sound like a low tone or a roar of the ocean. So in Meniere's disease, tinnitus can sound like a whistling sound in some patients, but it can also sound like a roaring ocean. Another very important finding with regards to Meniere's disease is hearing loss. It's important to note that the hearing loss is a loss of low to medium frequencies. And it's going to be unilateral most often. Again, most of the signs and symptoms that occur in this condition are unilateral or one-sided, although they could occur on both sides or bilaterally. And in order to actually determine this hearing loss, it has to be determined by audiometric measurements. And as this condition continues, this hearing loss can be worsened over time and may become permanent over time. Another important characteristic finding with regards to Meniere's disease is oral fullness. So a sensation that there is some fullness or some pressure within the ear. It may also be described as a discomfort in the ear as well. And so those are some of the classic findings in Meniere's disease, but some other findings can include nausea and vomiting. This often occurs with the vertical. You can imagine that if you feel that the room is spinning around for hours, the patient can feel very sick. They can become nauseous and possibly vomit as well. And this may be severe enough to lead to dehydration. So with dehydration comes other associated signs and symptoms. Dry mucous membranes are some of those. And with Meniere's disease, falls can also occur. So a sudden fall or drop may occur, but it's important to note that there is no loss of consciousness. So patient might fall, but they don't lose consciousness. They're still consciously aware of what's going on, but they do fall. And these falls are also known as crises of Tumarkin. 
This is an uncommon finding. It may occur in up to 10% of patients. Now, Meniere's disease itself is associated with other conditions, one of those being migraine headaches. So migraine headaches can be an associated finding with regards to Meniere's disease and Meniere's syndrome. So a migraine headache is a unilateral pounding headache. So one side of the head, there's a pain and it's pounding. And migraine headaches are often associated with the following signs and symptoms, including nausea and vomiting. So we just talked about that being something that can be found in Meniere's disease as well. So this can also tie in with migraine headaches. Tinnitus can also be found and photophobia and phonophobia can also be found. So photophobia is sensitivity to light. Phonophobia is sensitivity to sound. So there are many, many other different signs and symptoms that occurs with a migraine headache. If you want more information, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And fatigue can occur in these patients as well. So feeling very tired, very fatigued, or stress can occur with Meniere's disease. And this is likely due to the fact that they continue to have recurrent spontaneous attacks of vertigo, which are debilitating. So it can be very, very tiring and stressful for these patients. Now, after an attack or episode has completed and that can take upwards of 12 hours, there are some signs and symptoms that can occur even after the episode. These include ongoing nausea, fatigue, and the sensation of feeling unsteady. So it can take a long time for patients to recover from one of these episodes. And when they do recover, they are most often going to be fairly asymptomatic until the next spontaneous recurrent episode. And we did talk about this before that there is a difference between Meniere's disease and Meniere's syndrome. Meniere's syndrome is when the underlying cause is known. So if there's an underlying cause that is causing these symptoms that we just talked about in this lesson, then we would consider that Meniere's syndrome. If the cause is unknown, if other things have been ruled out, there's no other cause known that is Meniere's disease. They're going to have the same signs and symptoms, but with Meniere's syndrome, if it's caused by one of these underlying causes, there may be some other extra signs and symptoms. So some of the underlying causes that can lead to Meniere syndrome include hypothyroidism, so a low functioning thyroid, hyperthyroidism or a high functioning thyroid or a thyroid gland that's pumping out more thyroid hormone, syphilis, so an infection with syphilis can also lead to Meniere's syndrome, and then a condition known as autorenal syndrome can also cause Meniere's syndrome. So with these underlying causes, they also have their own signs and symptoms that can also occur. So if you want more information on those signs and symptoms, please check out my lessons on these topics. And if you want more information on how Meniere's disease is diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.